Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create your own Photoshop mock-up template using smart objects in Photoshop. And once you have it set up, you can use it over and over again just by dragging and dropping whatever photo you want and it perfectly blends in with the material. Before we jump into the tutorial, I wanna tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is a great marketplace for creative assets like premium mockups, creative fonts, images in 360, and there's also a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering, icons, illustrations, patterns, and all different types of UX and UI kits to help you design better. You just simply search and you can find any mockup that you need that you can just drag and drop and easily place your images and logos and stylize it to your brand. And once you're done, you can just export it and send it on to your client or team for approval. I'll be showing you how to use one of their object mockups later in the video. But for now, let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how you can create your own object mockup templates from scratch, starting from zero. And don't forget that you can download the project assets to follow along in my description box below. So thank you, Yellow Images, for sponsoring. And let's go ahead and jump on in. The first step is to create a placeholder for the image. This is going to be the place where you will drag and drop the image you want to use, whether it's a photo, graphic, or a logo. To do this, let's click on the new layer icon and let's rename it to placeholder. And next we need to fill in our placeholder. To do that, we're going to use the rectangular marquee tool to draw a rectangle around the canvas. And it's okay if there's a little bit of space around the images because we're going to create a mask in just a moment so it perfectly fits around the outline of the canvas. So next we need to fill in this rectangle with a gray color. Let's double click on the foreground color and let's type in the code for 50% gray, which is 808080. You'll see that nothing happens after we hit okay. And that's okay because what we need to do next is press option plus delete on a Mac or alt plus backspace on a PC to then fill in this layer with the 50% gray. And next to deselect this gray rectangle, press Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. Now as we zoom in, we can see that it's created a perfect gray rectangle over the canvas. And you'll also see that we kind of lose the rounded corners of the canvas as well as the texture of the canvas. So to make sure that the placeholder will be applied to the canvas itself, we need to create a selection and a mask. But before we do that, we need to convert this layer into a smart object. To do this, go up to filter and choose convert for small filters and hit OK. And now we have a smart object. Now we need to create a selection of the actual canvas itself using the pen tool or your favorite selection tool. So first, let's turn off the visibility of the placeholder layer. And now I'm going to select the pen tool and make sure that you're in the path mode. And from here, I'm going to zoom in by hitting command and plus on my Mac or control plus on a PC to zoom in as close as you can so you can see the edges of the canvas. And then you can begin to click and trace the edge of the canvas perfectly. For the corner, you can click and hold to make a curved line. I'm going to fast forward here as I trace, but the most important thing to do is to be as precise as possible. So once you close off this selection by selecting the first point that you created, we can zoom back out and you can see that it's a pen path around the canvas. But how do we make this into a selection? What we need to do is use the key combination command and return on a Mac, or you can press control and backspace on a Windows. So now you can see it's a selection and now we can turn the gray placeholder layer back on with the visibility on and now we can make it a mask by selecting the mask icon. And as you zoom in, you might see that the selection may not be exactly perfect as we thought. You can see there's a little bit of white of the canvas peeking out on the edge. So to fix that, let's go back by hitting Command Z on a Mac or Control and Z on a PC. 
Then from the select menu up at the top, we can go to modify the selection by selecting expand. And let's expand it out by a couple pixels, one or two pixels will do. And then once again, we can go to modify and go to smooth. And let's smooth it to around three pixels. So now we can go ahead and go back to selecting the mask icon again. And now we can zoom in and see that it's perfectly overlaid on the outline of the canvas. We don't see any more uh, of the canvas, the white canvas coming out. But when we zoom back out here, you can see, oh, the gray image is quite flat. There's no canvas texture and there's no shadow on the side of the canvas. If we turn off the layer, you can see that there's a shadow on the original canvas. But when we turn on the gray layer, it's gone. Same with the texture. So to bring back the shadow and the texture to make it more realistic, we need to select the mask layer here and we need to change the blend mode to multiply. And look at that, the texture and shadow is back. It helped darken the image. So now we're nearly there. We just need to add some more lighting controls to the highlights and the shadows of the image. To create these controls, we're going to duplicate the background layer. So select the background layer first and press Command J twice on a Mac and you'll have two copies. And let's rename one of them to highlight and the other to shadow. And then let's drag both of these layers up to be above the placeholder layer. So let's start with the shadow and let's turn off the visibility of the highlight. Because we just want to control the light and not the color, let's desaturate this shadow by making it black and white. To do that, select the shadow layer and select Command Shift U on a Mac or Control Shift U on a PC and this will make it black and white. So now that it's black and white, Next, we need to create more shadows by darkening the layer. And we're going to use the same blend mode that we used before, which is multiply. But because this is a template, we need to also give more control to change the intensity of the shadows for each image that we put in this placeholder in the future. So this is where we're going to create a curves adjustment layer. And from here, we're going to drop the shadow slightly using the curves just by selecting it and moving the curves just a little bit lower. But right now, this adjustment layer, the curves adjustment layer, is affecting all of the layers below it. And we don't want that. We only want it to affect the shadows layer. So to do that, all we need to do is hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and select the line between the curves and the shadows. And it will apply the curves just to the shadow layer below it. So next, we also need to limit the shadows just to the canvas itself. And to do that, we need to copy the mask onto the shadows layer. And to do that, we're also gonna hold the Alt key or the Option key and drag it onto the shadows. And now it's only affecting the shadows. Next, let's go to the highlights and do the same thing. So let's turn it back on. And just like the shadows, let's also desaturate it first. So we're just working with the light and not the color, just by pressing Command Shift U and then instead of changing the blend mode to multiply, which will darken it, this time we want to let in more of the highlights. So we're going to change the blend mode to screen. And again, we want to create a control for this. So let's create another curves adjustment layer and then also press Alt or Option and select the line between these layers. So the curves are only applied to the highlight layer. So now from the curves control, we want to click up at the top of the curve to preserve the highlights more. And then we're gonna make another point here at the top right square. And then we're just gonna drag it down slightly just to unbrighten the shadow areas a little bit and preserve some of the light. And just like the shadows, we don't want the highlights affecting the whole picture, just the canvas. So what you can do is do the same as we did before just by pressing Alt or Option and dragging the mask again on the highlights. But you can actually see that there's a lot of layers here. So let's not do that and let's make a group of these highlights and shadows first. So select the shadow, hold the shift key, select the top layer, and then right click and let's make a group from the layers and let's call this highlights and shadows. Now all we have to do is move the mask from the shadow layer on the group itself. And now you can see that the mask is being applied to both the highlights and the shadows as a group.
So I still think that the highlights and the shadows are a little bit too much. So what you can do here, and this is where the control comes in handy, is you can control the opacity. So let's move the highlights down to 35% and the shadows also to 35%. And we can always change these values at any time. And I'll show you how to do that once we apply our image to this placeholder later on. And now we can turn off this group and you can see what it looked like before to see how flat it was without the lighting. And now let's turn it back on and you can see it looks far more realistic. So now that the template is done, we need to save it as a template. So to do that, you can go to File, Save As, and save it on your computer. And rather than saving it as a .psd file, we're going to save it as a template. So if you're on a PC, you can add a T to the end of PSD, which stands for template, and you can save that to your local hard drive. But if you're on a Mac, just save it as a .psd. And then once you're in your finder, this is where you're gonna add the T just by double clicking inside of it and adding a T to the end of it, and then select use.psdt. And now we can close the existing project. And now the cool part about opening up this .psdt file is it'll open up as a new untitled project, meaning that it's making a copy and the original template is not affected at all. So to add in a placeholder image to our canvas template, just double click to open up the placeholder. And I'm going to go to my finder and drag in this avatar image that Zach Dines made for me. It's the avatar that I have on my YouTube channel. And I'm also gonna make another layer and use the paint bucket tool to fill it in yellow for the background. Then I'm going to save it. And now when I go back to the entitled template project, you can see that the image is nicely composited on the canvas in a realistic way. And of course you can go in and make adjustments to the opacity of the highlights and the shadows until it looks just right. But when you zoom in, you can see that all the canvas texture is there and it looks really, really cool. And it looks like you literally have printed this on canvas and then you can save it as its own file. So if you become really good at creating your own mock-up templates, you can actually become an author for yellow images and sell your mock-ups there. But if you don't wanna to have to go through the whole process of creating a template or it's a bit more complicated of an object, Yellow Images has a ton of different object mockups that you can search for. And once you download it, all you have to do is just drag and drop the placeholder image in the placeholder and play around with the lighting and that's it. You can chip it off to your client or your team to review and it's really easy to use. So don't forget you can get 20% off any object mockup or any of the assets on Yellow Images using my code GAL20. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It certainly helps grow this channel and lets me know if you want more Photoshop tutorials on the channel. Also be sure to hit that notification bell after you subscribe so you're notified when I publish more tips on the channel. And also a huge shout out to all of the patrons that help support the channel as well. And you can get some perks there, such as free templates every now and then, and some direct message support if you have any other questions. Which brings me to this week's comment of the week. Dr. D. Darlene Dehan wrote, how do you get the files uploaded to After Effects? I am new to all of this. This is the one step that is giving me issues. So this comment was left on my video on how to edit logo reveal templates in After Effects. There's no way to upload a file to After Effects, but you open it up and then if it was created, if the template was created on a previous version of After Effects, you just need to convert it to the most recent version and it will usually have a warning box and you just click OK and then you'll save it as its own converted version. And that's it. And from there you can open it up and start using the template and replacing the different scenes with your own videos and photos and graphics and different colors as well. And that's all there is to it. So hopefully that answered your question. And if you guys have any questions that you want answered in a comment of the week in a future video, just leave a comment below and I'll take a look and pick one to feature in the next video. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.